This is the iZip Urban Cruiser Enlightened, and this particular bike here is from 2009. So around 2009, 2010, this was being sold through Curly, Curry Technologies, and uh, it's just kind of an older bike. It's kind of fun to see how this technology has changed over time and, and certain aspects that have remained the same. Um, let me just jump into you know the bicycle the bicycle aspects. We've got a uh, aluminum alloy frame here and sort of a cantilever mimicking design um, with a little bit of an extra reinforced uh, top tube and down tube there. It's kind of kind of interesting. I did weigh this earlier. It's about 49 pounds, so not not too bad. And part of that's because the battery is smaller and the motor is smaller. And I'll get to that in a few. Uh, we've got these sort of partial plastic, partial aluminum alloy platform pedals, you know, basic. Standard kickstand there with a little bit of an adjustment, which is nice. Pre-slimed tire tubes for, uh, you know, durability, because when you're riding a bike and you're uh, in electric mode, something a little heavier, if you get a flat, it's a little bit diff more difficult to change, especially the rear tire. There's no, uh, no quick releases on a lot of these older electric bikes, and now they're starting to have that with quick disconnects and stuff, but you can see that this one really doesn't, so it's kind of a pain to take that off basically the hub and the the cables constantly attached and you have to kind of fool around with it um, and dealing with that extra cable You've got a disc brake in the front tectro disc brake levers so they actually have a motor inhibitor cut off uh, when you when you pull the brake and it looks like maybe 160 millimeter uh, rotor let me just spin this a little bit see if it's yeah, 160 millimeter. Quick release on the front, which is nice. These smooth, sort of oversized tires, a little bit thicker on top, you can see right here. And that's gonna help prevent flats and stuff. And it looks like this is, let's see. Yeah, 26 by two inch. Basic suspension fork on the front. SR Suntour Nex 4100 V2. A uh, little bit of maybe a rebound adjust here. Uh, but that's it. No lockout or anything. Kind of a standard size uh, head tube. These real nice upright swept back handlebars, almost chopper style. Got the leather woven grips, or they might be faux leather, not really sure. Basic bell, there's the brake levers, and then eight speeds with a trigger shifter. And I actually like that. They work really well as I've been riding around testing this thing out. Uh, the front ring is just, there's just one. Um, all the gears are in the back here. There's all eight of them with the SRAM X7 derailleur. And I kind of like this setup. You know, eight speeds is, even today in 20, almost 2015, uh, you've got a lot of bikes that have like eight to 10 speeds in the rear and they keep that front chain ring um, just, just single because uh, you can do, do what they've done here. You've got like a bash guard on one side and then a plastic guide on the other so the chain won't flop off as easily. And you really have a lot less maintenance when you only have one derailleur. So that's pretty cool. And on the rear, instead of having another disc brake, they've got a V-brake. And, and that kind of keeps the rear end of the bike a little bit cleaner. So again, a lot of more modern electric bikes do put disc brakes on the back as well as the front. But back in the day, you know, it just wasn't it was a lot more complexity than it was worth. And this was like a $1,900 bike, so almost $2,000. Uh, and when I hit you with the specs in a second, you're gonna be like, wow, you really didn't, you didn't get a lot for that money. These days for around 2,000, you can get a, a lot more power and a lighter bikes and a little bit more balance with better, better components. But I, I must say, in addition to the front suspension fork, you've also got a seat post uh, suspension element right there. And then this nice saddle that's pretty plush it's got the rubber bumpers so pretty comfortable ride you know and that's part of the whole cruiser thing um, and i guess the enlightened line from that time period was like that was drawing from the whole electric bicycle aspect of uh, being a little bit more than just a bicycle i do love though that look at this they had water bottle uh, brazons right here on the down tube a lot of electric bikes today like skip on that and i'm always surprised because it's just nice to be able to you know, bring your bring your bottle along. And for 2009, this was actually a pretty forward-thinking electric bike because they put the battery in the down tube. It's integrated right there. Not easily removable, that's one of the downsides. But the upside is that you don't have a huge rack hanging off the back. You're not putting the battery way up high and creating instability. Um, you've already got the motor weight in the back, which a lot of times is around, you know, seven to nine pounds. Uh, this is a much smaller motor, so maybe six or seven. 
and then you know bringing the weight of the battery to the front is excellent so let's just go ahead and, and jump into the actual motor size this is only 180 watts of uh, geared motor design geared rear hub motor that's not a lot you know compared to a lot of today's bikes 250 is low you know and they go up to 750 in the United States uh, so 180 is just like it's almost nothing but it still helps you if you think about um, you know people who, who ride bikes in races and stuff and marathons and stuff at, at a pretty good clip they're putting out like 200 watts so this is almost like having you know a pretty fit friend help you pedal um, as long as you're as long as you're getting assistance and then the battery on this is 24 volts so again pretty low a lot of batteries these days are 36 volt or even 48 volt and the higher the voltage uh, the more efficient the electricity is transferred between the battery and the motor and so you know again this is old stuff the shelf life for a lithium ion battery like this is only about five years and that's what we're at with this i mean this hasn't really been used but it has been maintained i'm testing it at myron's extreme machines in fullerton california they have the electric bicycle center um, a bunch of you know kind of old and unique stuff and they help clear out inventory sometimes on on older models they've actually had this bike that whole time just never never moved this product they got other better bikes people were interested in and now he's marked it down to like 500 bucks um, but you know he, he also sells it with a battery because curry technology uh, they do still to a limited extent support batteries for some of these older models and you can imagine buying a bike like this thinking it's new even at five hundred dollars thinking you're getting a bargain if the battery goes out right away when you just got a, a heavy bike with eight speeds so it's kind of nice that both curry Technologies is still in business and they're, they're doing really well and they still support their old stuff and that you've got some shops that'll help you out so there's some background on that this bike doesn't actually have a twist throttle or anything it's only pedal assist which is going to help you climb a little bit easier because you're going to be helping the bike you're not just sitting back trying to use the throttle you're actively engaged and it's also going to extend the range of the battery for the same reason because you're you're engaged you're given your own muscle power while the bike supports you with its motor and the way it activates is with this uh, torque sensor right here so you can see there's like some metal plates going on um, that sort of like bends or flexes as you push down on the pedals and it pulls the chain more taut so that's like a yeah it's a torque sensing pedal assist a little bit smoother a little bit more fluid but it does mean that you actively pedal in order to activate it it's not just sensing movement it's sensing how hard you're pushing and it's responding in kind I think that's about it I'm gonna I'm gonna hop on this thing and do a quick demo and you can listen closely for the motor it is a little bit quiet so you might not hear it uh, in order to activate this bike you charge up the battery which again you kind of have to have the the whole bike inside or run an extension cord you plug it in right there charge it up press the on off button here and it you know we're almost at full and I'm all the way up in the highest level of assist which is level five so as soon as I start pushing that motor is going to kick in pretty relaxed like that upright riding position pretty smooth with the torque sensing assist the motor does continue uh, to accelerate a little bit after I've stopped pedaling and I you know again I just think um, it's just a little bit of a slower older motor but it gets the job done I mean you can definitely feel it kicking in helping you out got the good seating position like I mentioned you know it's it it performs it, it does its thing but being a bike from 2009 I mean you, you kind of expect it maybe you're not going to get the fanciest setup and and you, you really don't but it's nice to have something like this that's a little bit cheaper and get to see where where some of the iZip lines started all those years ago so that's the whoa there we go that's the iZip Urban Cruiser Enlightened for the full write-up on this and other newer iZip reviews I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com